Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So anyone who's been following the news for the past few weeks has probably seen a few stories about Joe Rogan for being an alleged spreader of misinformation. In this case on the news about like vaccines and COVID-19. We're not going to get into that. This is a vegan focused show. And I, I want to just point out, I myself have been calling Joe Rogan out for maybe four or five years as being a hor horrible spreader of anti-vegan misinformation. So maybe this this is a pattern that goes on on other topics. I don't know because I don't watch his podcast. But anyway, I want to show you guys what I've been talking about here. Why I've been so just negative about Joe Rogan's misinformation on veganism. I'm going to show you some of the just most bizarre, just just outright just nutty things Joe has said, false things that Joe has said about veganism and why it's so harmful to say this stuff in front of millions of impressionable viewers. Plants are a life form, and we have this thing in our head that because they don't move, oh, they must be stupid. Mm -hmm. But they're in some way communicating with each other in a method that we don't totally understand. Yeah. Which fucks vegans hard. Yeah, right. That whole self righteousness and all the craziness that comes along with being a vegan and oh, cruelty free. Yeah. Not to those screaming plants <laughs> that you can't hear. <laughs> All right, so let's give Joe Rogan the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe he's speaking more flowery, like his buddy Jordan Peterson. Maybe Joe doesn't really believe plants scream. He's just using that as a metaphor or something. Or does he mean this literally? They fucking scream, yeah, man. Yeah, right. They, they make noise. Really? They make noise? How come I've never heard it? Or does one have to be super stoned on DMT to hear this noise, Joe? They, and they know when they're being eaten. That's one of the weirder things. Yeah. All right, so let's snip Joe in the bud right there with this huge misinformation, trying to debunk veganism by saying, hey, look, plants have feelings and can feel pain, and therefore vegans are causing all this harm. Well, let's just stop you right there, Joe. There's a huge flaw with your assertion that plants feel pain, and they scream. First big problem is that plants are lacking the physical hardware that mammals have to experience pain, chiefly having brains and central nervous systems. And you don't have to take my word. I'm just a dumb bro like Joe. There's actually been the papers that have been published on this trying to dispel this absurd notion. And here it says very clearly that no, Plants don't have consciousness, they don't have brains, they don't have feelings. It's a resounding no to that preposterous assertion of Joe's. And I always find it super amusing and hypocritical that people like Joe have no moral issues killing animals, exploiting animals for food, all of a sudden find themselves playing the role of plant activists. Like, how does that make any sense? You don't give a crap about animals, but plants, we have to protect these poor screaming plants. Hmm. Anyway, let's move on to the next claim here from Joe. And you'll see it's kind of interesting. He actually thought he was a vegan for a while. And I've considered vegetarianism. And when I was fighting, I, I, I was a vegan or a vegetarian rather for I guess I was probably considered vegan I don't think I was eating any cheese and I wasn't drinking any milk, but I did that for like six months It didn't it just didn't agree with me, you know I mean, maybe I yeah. didn't do it right and I never did it again But I was doing it to try to lose weight as yeah. well. I was, I, I was also not eating enough I was, it was there was a lot going on there because I was trying to fight at a, a low weight class sure. So you heard Joe there claiming that he was either vegan or considered to be vegan at some point in the past when he was trying to eat only plants with the sole goal of dropping a lot of weight to fight at a lighter weight class. And this whole thing about vegan diets being like great for weight loss, that's what veganism is all about, brings up a whole nother misconception about veganism. Once again, let's return to the definition of veganism here. And you'll see it makes no mention about weight loss, losing weight, getting ripped or jacked or shredded or anything like that. Veganism has nothing to do with those issues. Veganism is all about ethics and morality, a moral stance against animal exploitation and cruelty. So my point is, if you're eating a vegan diet, awesome, but that does not necessarily make you vegan. You have to believe that it's wrong to harm animals to truly be vegan. But yeah, just when you eat a vegan diet, go for it. I have to understand, even that's not clean, man. Large-scale agriculture in terms of farming that shit kills a lot of animals and you're gonna blame this on vegans somehow or we're responsible for this or what Joe oh. it displaces a lot of wildlife you're never supposed to have a thousand acres of soybeans or a thousand acres of corn and when they're using those combines they are grinding up bunnies and rats yep. and yep. mice yep. and killing countless bugs 
Joe and other anti-vegans love to talk about this problem so often that I've developed a name for this argument that they it's a weak argument. I call it the combine harvester argument. All these horrible crop deaths that occur from combine harvesters. And somehow that de debunks veganism somehow. It doesn't. But anyway, let's look at how silly and ridiculous this whole combine harvester argument is. Like Joe referred specifically to soy crops and corn crops, which yes, they're producing these giant, you know, agribusiness methods, big fields and big ho combine harvesters. Well, if you look at what who actually ends up eating or consuming soy and corn in this country, it's not humans, it's livestock. The majority of soy and corn produced in the United States is grown to feed livestock. Just like 7% of soy actually reaches human mouths in the form of food. So if Joe were truly concerned about all these animals being ground up in combine harvesters to produce soy and corn, well, you should go vegan or eat just plants at least because if you truly want to reduce crop deaths, the fewer plants we have to grow for all these livestock to eat, the fewer crop deaths there'd be, Joe. And yes, there are crop deaths in agriculture. I'm not denying that. And I'll show you, it's not as big of an issue as these anti-vegans think it is. There's actual data to back up what I'm saying here. But let's return to the definition of veganism to show you how veganism is not somehow debunked because of crop deaths. The definition says very clearly these words, as far as possible and practicable, as far as eliminating all cruelty and exploitation to animals. So if there's some unintentional harm to an animal, Animal from a turnip truck running over a, a squirrel on the road or a gopher getting into a combine harvester during harvesting doesn't mean veganism is null and void. It, what these anti-vegans are, are, are invoking is the appeal to futility fallacy, sometimes known as the, the nirvana fallacy, which basically says this, hey, if you can't eliminate all cruelty, make, you know, like eliminate it from the face of the earth, well, forget the whole idea. Let's just have you know all cruelty all the time. It doesn't matter. We can harm animals for food, clothing, and not have to worry about it because a gopher might get ran over by a turnip truck. And regarding how many animals actually get killed in harvesting, like say rice or potatoes, compared to how many animals get killed to produce chicken or beef, well, there's actually been a mathematical model that has tried to calculate as best they could the actual numbers for this. And this model makes the distinction between animals killed for slaughter versus animals killed in the harvest of foods. And as you'll see here, it's it's not even close. If you wanna have as few animals killed as possible, the only choice you would have is to not consume animal products. So Joe, it's time to just lay off the combine harvester argument, please. It's just complete nonsense. Anyway, let's move on to an episode where we had Russell Brand on, who was a relatively new vegan at the time. But you'll be better. You know, you're you're a fit guy. You're a healthy guy. If you just keep going, get off that fucking vegan diet and keep going. Maybe Joe's joking there. I don't know. But if you're a young, impressionable viewer and you hear that, you just think, oh, yeah, vegan diets aren't as healthy as eating a bunch of meat like Joe which is complete nonsense and a reason why I'm showing this is some anti-vegan misinformation he has said on his podcast. But anyway, let's see what Russell Brand says in response. I watched a documentary <laughs> um, called What the Health. Have you seen yeah, it? It's, like, yeah, it's filled with a lot of propaganda. Ah, uh, propaganda. There's no was understanding of excess carbs and how excess carbs leads to excess body weight and it makes, it makes you store fat. Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? Really, propaganda. Talk about propaganda, Joe. You're just projecting here. This is just anti-vegan, low-carb propaganda nonsense that eating carbs turns people fat. I mean, look at me here. I'm not really obese. I have a very healthy body mass index. And yeah, I'm just a case study of one. For all we know, I'm a genetic freak. Let's look at an example from, say, the Adventist Health Study, where they compared the body mass indexes of Seventh-day Adventists who were vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, and meat eaters. And strangely, the people who ate only plants, and remember, plants are composed mainly of carbohydrates. Why did the plant eaters have the leanest body mass indexes? Joe, again, complete misinformation. Vegans and plant eaters, people who eat carbohydrates, are not inherently predisposed to be overweight or obese. Completely the opposite is true. Well, let's move on to another episode where he was discussing a recent guest, former presidential candidate Andrew Yang, and they were talking about benefits of vegetarian diets, and Joe Rogan would have none of it. Yeah, you know, and even that Andrew Yang guy, like talking about getting people to stop eating meat, like that, hey, 
No. Yeah, no, come on. Stop. You can't. All right. I think there's a lot of people that would argue against that. I think if he sat down with those people and had a debate, I don't think he'd do well. You know, yeah. I think I think if someone who could explain the nutrition require, like really explain, based on like a Chris Kresser guy. Oh, really, Joe? So vegan and vegetarian diets are somehow nutritionally deficient. It's really difficult, and we need to listen to your buddy Chris Kresser to tell us how to be healthy vegans. Remember, Chris Kresser is very anti-vegan. If you have, if you're a vegan and you're eating a vegan diet, you need to have a perfect vegan diet to be healthy. You need to know what you're doing in terms of supplementation and how to meet the nutrient needs that aren't being met through diet. Oh, really, Chris? Huh? I'm 11 year vegan. I wasn't aware that vegan diets are inherently nutritionally deficient because there's all these missing nutrients in plants that only meat has. Well, do you have any evidence to support that? Maybe the position of a professional health organization? Well, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics says very clearly that appropriately planned vegan diets are nutritionally adequate. So I'm not sure where Chris is getting in his information that vegan diets are just completely dangerous because they're missing all this nutrition. But I think the flip side of what Chris is saying here is that meat has all these nutrients. So if you're eating meat, you don't need to take supplements, right? I take vitamin supplements every day. I take uh, multivitamins, I take probiotic, I take uh, vitamin B12 and D and a lot of different things. Again, the hypocrisy. A moment ago, we just heard. If you're a vegan and you're eating a vegan diet, you need to have a perfect vegan diet to be healthy. You need to know what you're doing in terms of supplementation and how to meet the nutrient needs that aren't being met through diet. Yeah, Joe Rogan, who is apparently meeting all his nutritional needs through diet alone, takes more supplements than I could ever imagine ever having to take as a vegan. What's up with that? Anyway, let's move on to some more anti-vegan misinformation here. How vegans don't have enough, at least males, don't have enough male sex hormone. We're just somehow feminized. Lack of saturated fat and cholesterol, dietary cholesterol and saturated fat leads to hormonal imbalances, leads to your body having a, 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 a harder time producing sex hormones. And Joe, can you produce any evidence, any scientific papers to back up what you're saying here? You can't because you're again spreading more anti-vegan misinformation. The real problem is when they distort the reality of the scientific findings right. of the human animal and diet. And that's an issue with a lot of people that are vegetarians and vegans that go on about how healthy they feel and about how awesome, but they're not doing blood lipid profiles. Joe, who are you talking about? I mean, I've been putting my blood labs up on my YouTube channel here since we started back in 2013, putting them up regularly every year and a half or so. So this is nonsense that vegans are lying about the science, not sharing their blood labs. I've yet to see Joe's labs, so stop being a hypocrite, Joe. Well, anyway, let's talk about my testosterone level. Levels, and I'll share them with you here. First of all, I want to point out, let's compare mine to Joe as best as we can because I think it's fair. We were both born in the same year, 1967, just like seven days apart. And I want to point out that yeah, we're both 54 and a person, a male's um, testosterone prime years are typically in their late 20s and they, the levels slowly drop off over the decades after that. Anyway, let's look at mine here. This is my most recent test from last year. And as you'll see here, my testosterone testosterone levels are pretty much right in line for a guy in his mid to late 20s, the testosterone producing prime years. Testosterone replacement therapy, hormone replacement therapy, I started doing all that when I was 40. Oh really Joe, so you've been taking testosterone replacement therapy for about 14 years now? You started when you were 40, so you're already low in testosterone at age 40? Remember, I'm 54 and my levels are you know great for a guy that's like 28 years old. So does anyone else see the blatant hypocrisy of Joe Rogan saying that vegans of all people are the ones who have low testosterone levels? Such nonsense. Add a little bit of growth hormone. Add a little bit of testosterone. First it was cream and then it became injections and then you get to a point where you're you have the hormone levels of a healthy young man which is exactly I have Joe yet I've never had any testosterone replacement therapy or growth hormone treatment or anything like that yet I'm an 11 year vegan and I'm not trying to say I'm better than Joe my biology is better than his or something like that I'm just calling out his hypocrisy calling vegan males out for having trouble getting enough sex hormones because we don't have enough saturated fat when he himself has been getting testosterone replacement therapy for over 14 years because his sex 
sex hormones are low. Like, what can be more obvious about hypocrisy and misinformation than that? So anyway, let's end it here. I could go on. Joe's said a lot of nonsense about vegans over the years, but to me, this is like the hit parade, like the top four or five just bold-faced lies, misinformation Joe has said about veganism over the years. And I want to make it totally clear. I'm not calling for Joe Rogan to be canceled or banned or anything like that. I just believe since especially has such a large following, he should have a higher commitment to truth maybe do some fact checking before opening his mouth and just spreading all this complete just easily disprovable misinformation about veganism or any other topic because you know if they're not listening to my response videos his, his viewers they're not going to know that what he's saying is just a complete just just looney tunes it has no basis in reality so anyway guys um yeah that's it for now comment down below let me know what you think should be done about this joe rogan problem what can be done what's a practical solution to the just blatant misinformation he's been spreading. Anyway guys, hit like, subscribe, and until next time, let's remain happy, healthy, and vegan.